Now, Ralph Rannick says the role of Manchester United's interim manager was too good to turn down. He's taken his first news conference where he reveals he tried to persuade Michael Carrick to stay and also that he rejected a managerial contract with Chelsea earlier in the year. I mean, at the time when, when Chelsea contact, contacted me uh, uh, last year or this year in, in February, we, they only spoke about uh, the option to become interim manager for four months. So it was in February uh, without any perspective to, to work uh, in the long term together. And here now we are talking about six and a half months. So we only have one third of all the games played in the Premiership. And uh, as you all know, we have also agreed upon a, a two-year uh, advisory role after those six and a half months. And, uh, yeah, and, and in the end, to be honest, if a club like Manchester United contacts you um, for such a role, you cannot possibly turn it down. I mean, obviously, I have watched uh, the latest games. I watched not only last night's game, but also the games against the Watford and against Chelsea. And uh, on TV, when I didn't know that there would, would be contact in, in the next days, I also watched out of interest the games against Liverpool and against Man Manchester City. Uh, so I'm pretty well aware and acquainted with uh, what's happening here in the club and in the Premiership. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious uh, that uh, the team they, the team have abundant talent, young talented players, but also ex enough experienced players in the squad. But um, I mean, the major the major target for me in the next couple of weeks, days, weeks is just to to bring more balance into the team. Um, even yesterday, we conceded two goals. We needed three goals in the end to win the game. And if you look at, look at the total goals, number of goals conceded, it's almost two, two on average per game. And this is just too much. I met with Michael and with Kieran, but especially with Michael two days ago, I had a long uh, private conversation with him for more than an hour. And uh, I was trying to convince him to, to, to stay on board. But he had obviously taken that decision weeks ago um, that he needed a break and a rest after 30 years in professional football. And in the end, I had to accept that. In a way, I can also understand his decision. Um, the third question about the, the, the coaching staff, uh, I'm more than happy to, to work with the current coaching staff because I need their experience, I need their expertise regarding the current, the current squad. Um, I will obviously try to find one, two, maybe three people who can join us in the next one or two weeks, but due to the Brexit uh, regulations, it's not that easy. Many of my former uh, colleagues, no matter if it's uh, video analysts or assistant coaches, are in long-term contracts uh, with big clubs, so they are not available right now. So we have to be a little bit yeah, um, yeah, smart and clever and find the right people. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo now has 801 goals for club and country after his double last night helped Manchester United beat Arsenal 3-2. Rannick was in the stands for the game and was amazed by the striker's performance. You always have to adapt your style or your idea of football to the, to the, to the players you have available, not vice versa. And uh, having seen Cristiano yesterday in the second half, I mean, uh, at the age of 36, amazing, top professional. Um, at his age, I've never seen a player who is still that physically fit, and uh, he's he's still a player who can make the easily make the difference. Yes, and it's about how can we develop the whole team. It's not only about Cristiano. I mean, we play in the most competitive league in the world, so we need all the players on board. Um, what I saw from Cristiano yesterday, he's more than willing to do that, to, to, to put his input into the team. And the other team, uh, the teammates will have to do the same. It's about winning games. And uh, in the end, I'm very ambitious, like the whole club, like everybody in the club, like all the players. And we want, in the end, to make the most successful season out of it that is possible. Um, right now, we have to be realistic. The distance between us and the top three is big. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, we will see. It's, uh, it's about developing the performance and, um, as I said, help the team to get a feeling of how can we control the game. Rannick, of course, currently just has a six-month contract as the interim United manager, but he has hinted he could be willing to continue on in the future. People with whom I'm, I've spoken so far, they have been very clear about uh, that we are talking about a six, six and a half months uh, role as a manager currently. 
Um, we have never spoken about what will happen in the summer. Right now, I'm fully aware that they might be looking for a new manager. Um, if they will then speak with me about that, we will see. Um, maybe if they ask me my opinion, and it, as you said, everything goes well, we develop the team. I might even make the same recommendation to the board that uh, I did at Leipzig twice uh, when we when I recommended to them that it might be a good idea to work, keep working with me for one year. But this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is all hypothetical. It's, I can't, we cannot speak about that. For me now, it's about winning the next games, and uh, this is the major focus. Well, our reporter Ben Ransom was in the news conference, so let's go live to him right now. There he is. Ben, what impression did you get from his first news conference? I think as it came across there, to be honest, Rob, he was affable, he was considered, he showed uh, obviously a degree of, first of all, not wanting to set himself any targets that were too strict or that he might be judged on, but very much that he was excited for the challenge ahead. I mean, I, I did enjoy some of the more light-hearted moments, I and mean, you kind of... Uh, had one there when he suggested maybe he might recommend he gets the job permanently in the summer, which I thought was quite nice. And there was another quite nice one when he was asked whether or not there was this uh, clause that's been reported about a bonus if he's able to sign Erling Haaland, a player who the Red Bull group obviously had at Salzburg. And he jokingly uh, started feigning going through a contract and listing off Haaland and Bappe, Lewandowski, Kimmich, suggesting he's going to get bonuses for all of them and then obviously said it was all nonsense. But those light-hearted moments were certainly interspersed around more serious ones where he recognises the size of the challenge. And I think the challenge that in specifically that presents itself to him personally, trying to get his philosophy across, given the lack of training time, because as he said, he's got one training session today at three o'clock and many of the players obviously won't even be available, not physically anyway, in terms of the ones that were involved last night. They're going to be doing recovery. So it's going to be about video analysis. It's going to be about trying to help them mentally and, and give them an impression of what he wants from the team. But ultimately, he's realistic about the changes that he can make in a short term. But look, overall, I think his performance was very good. As I say, he was very considered. He was engaged with all the different journalists right across the spectrum of the media, broadcast, radio, the written guys as well. He engaged with every question. He tried to give considered and thoughtful answers. And you can tell he has thought, he's done his research, he's made all the notes as we saw in the stands yesterday, frantically making a lot of them, it appears. Well, today's his first opportunity to now try and get some of those messages across to his players.